Well, hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I have with me the Roborock S7 right here and the Roborock S6 Max V here in black. And these two robot vacuums have been out on the market for quite some time. And what happens when you kind of combine the technologies of these two robots together? Well, I have just the thing for you here today. And here we have it. This is the S7 Max V Ultra. This was announced a little bit earlier this year at CES. It is not for sale just yet. You're getting a first look right here on my channel. The new flagship model from Roborock takes the best features from the S6 Max V, which is the reactive AI, and improves on it greatly to be able to better identify objects, rooms, furniture, and even floor types, and to be able to make smart logical decisions based on this input. Gone are the two front-facing stereo cameras of the S6 Max V. Now we have an RGB camera, a 3D structured light sensor, and an all new neural processing unit. It's all very advanced and it stands to allow Roborock to stand out in the industry as a leader in navigation technology. Otherwise, this is almost the same as the S7 on the market today. Roborock has upped the suction power to 5100 pascals, which is over twice the suction power of the older models, including the original S7. Only the S7 Max V will work with the ultra empty wash fill dock though, just a thing to note. The dock here is the empty wash fill dock, and as the name states, it will empty out the dustbin, it will wash the mopping pan, also refill the water tank in the S7 Max V. When you purchase these two together, the name implies that it is the S7 Max V Ultra. In my opinion, this is a great combo, but you can also buy the S7 Max V by itself, and you can also buy the S7 Max V with the standard S7 dock. So there's a couple of different combinations there so you can choose the one that's right for you. Well, without any further delay, let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing now. And we are going to start with the S7 Max V here. Now this is a pre-production model. This won't go on sale until a little bit later in the second quarter from what I've been told. No exact date yet has been given for the release of this, at least in the US. Uh, so some things could change, but let's go ahead and take a look at the, the box here. Everything looks really nice, good color graphics. It does show the app with that 3D image. We'll have to see if that's available just yet. The 3D map of the house is something new with the S7 Max V. And here is the Roborock mopping pad. I imagine this is for use with the dock by itself and not for use if you're going to use it with a auto empty dock. It does have little suction cup pads on the very bottom to keep it from sliding around. It's a nice touch. And here is the mopping pad. All right, the regular S7 is here on the left and the S7 Max V is on the right. As you can see on the bottom, they are nearly identical. I don't really see any differences, except for maybe the very top up here. On the front, the mopping pads are almost identical as well. And we have the S7 Max V user manual here. We have a safety guide. And this is kind of a cheat sheet, a quick, quick start cheat sheet here. It shows you all the components. This is also neat and pretty different. Inside of the pouch that held the manual, is uh, the quick start networking guide along with a QR code to scan to download the Roborock app and tells you some information on how to get it connected to your network and set up. Okay, taking a look at the Roborock S7 Max V. Up front, this is Roborock's Reactive AI 2.0. It is essentially an updated revamped version of the one on the Roborock S6 Max V. It allows it to recognize objects in your house and also furniture and floor types. I'm going to go into a more depth video in the future on this when I put it head to head with the S6 Max V. So make sure you stay tuned to that. Also here on the front of the very sides, we have charging contacts for the auto empty dock. On the very side here, we do have a wall sensor and we can also see the clickable bumper here. In the back, we're starting to see some of the design element come in. It's not just all black, it does have some red accents here. On the very top, we do have a clickable sensor here on the very top of the LiDAR. These three holes here are the microphone for your two-way video calling. We got three buttons here. This is a spot cleaning button with a 
uh, lockout key here. If you'll hold this down, it'll lock it out. So if pets or something come up and hit one of these buttons, it won't automatically activate it. We do have our status indicator light here above what looks like uh, faux carbon fiber. A little bit more faux carbon fiber here on the very bottom. Opening up the lid to the S7 Max V Ultra, we do have a Wi-Fi light here and a reset button. Uh, no onboard tool storage though for cleaning out the roller brush. We see here that we have the dustbin. Looks very much so just like the dustbin in the original Roborock S7. I do believe that it is largely unchanged. Here we see the filter on the very top. It closes down. We see our trap door here on the side, the opening for debris and the suction for the suction motor to suck through the filter here. And looking inside here is again, much like the original S7. We do have our opening slot here where the debris will come through from the roller brush. The word hyperforce is written here on the side. We have opening over here with a slot to remove. We will have to remove this piece so there's enough suction to come through to empty out the dustbin. And here on the very back, we have a single wheel in the back. My guess is that's to help guide it into the uh, empty wash fill dock. And we can pretty easily remove the water tank on the very back, which is a different design. It is not huge, but it doesn't need to be because it will get refilled by the dock. And if not, if you don't choose not to get the dock, it's still a decent size water tank. There is your fill spot right there for the water tank. And what you can hear clicking around in here is a level so the S7 Max V can tell when the water tank is empty and go back to the dock and automatically get it filled up. Right here on the very back of the water tank is where the S7 Max V will go back to the dock and also fill itself up from water in the dock. So when this gets low, it will go back and fill itself up right here. All right, let's take a look at the bottom of the S7 Max V Ultra. Already I can tell you it looks a lot like the original S7. The roller brush design appears and the floating deck appears to be largely unchanged. We have our standard side spinning brush here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six cliff sensors so that it doesn't tumble down your stairs. We have the front facing right here charging contacts, center wheel, dedicated carpet sensor so that if it goes on the carpet it will back off and, or raise the mopping pad. This does have the ability to lift the mopping pad a few millimeters. So if it does go over carpet, it's not dragging a wet mop over your carpets. Here you can see the nozzle, which will spray water onto the mopping pad here. And also the agitation arm, which will vibrate the mopping pad at ultrasonic speed in order to scrub your floors. We have two suspension wheels here. Taking the cover off is just as simple as always. Rubber Rock has not changed the design of the roller brush since the original S7. That is the same design roller brush with the removable ends. All that looks to be exactly the same. Now, if you get the S7 Max V without an empty dock, or you purchase the empty dock separately later, you will get a charging dock and a charging cable. If you get a dock with a auto empty station later, you will disregard these two items as they'll no longer be needed as the auto empty dock will do the charging for you. Placing the moppy pad onto the bottom of the S7 Max V, simply just push it and it will click. And there you go, you have your mopping pad attached. To detach the mopping pad, there's two buttons here on the side. You push them in at the same time and pull away. Very simple design. And of course, this just Velcros on. So you can pull it off. Slide it out, throw it in the wash machine or hand wash it, and when you're done, put it back on. Okay, here opening up the uh, empty wash fill dock, we have a manual. We have a quick start guide. Here is the front of the dock. We'll have to assemble this in a few minutes. This is what the S7 Max V will drive up on. We have the very thick charging cable for the dock. 
that will power it and its motors. And here is a spare set of bags. Now these are different than the bags for the S7 dock. Uh, for one, this is only a bag model. You cannot get this bagless, and I don't think there's going to be the ability to have it bagless in the future. Uh, but one thing I noticed that the bag is supposedly going to be washable and clean. you can clean it out. I noticed here on the very back that this is plastic instead of cardboard. This is a decent sized dust bag. I can go ahead and tell you that it is smaller than the one in the S7. There is the opening right there. You can see here how it opens and closes when you lift it out. It is a really nice uh, looking spare dust bag that comes in the box. Okay, and here we are with the dock out of the box. Now, assembly was very easy. All I did is push the front uh, plate here down on the front of the dock. And let's go ahead and start here on the top. Over here we have our dirty water tank. It just simply lifts out. There is a latch on the front. Open it up. We have a water height sensor here. When it fills up, it will let the robot vacuum know that it can no longer hold any more liquid in here and tell you to go ahead and empty it out. It does not appear to lock in place. It seems to just sit there. So the handle does not perform the function of anything other than a handle to lift out. Now this is the clean water tank. And again, pull up on this and you put your clean fresh water in here. There's also a sensor in the bottom to let you know when the water empty level is totally out on this so you can fill it back up and close it up, snap it down, pop it right back in. Now on this side over here, we have the dust bag uh, for the auto empty feature. And uh, this dust bag just simply pulls up and lifts out when it is full and time to empty. And it closes itself off and it comes with a spare dust bag in the box. Now this dock, unlike the dock for the S7, does not have extra filtration. All of your filtration is right here in the bag, which should be sufficient enough for most users. If you do want more filtration, the other dock, the S7 dock, is going to be available for this. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the inner workings in here. All right, looking at the bottom of the dock here, there are two wheels in the front to help guide the S7 Max V up on the dock. We have our big slot here, which will empty out the contents of the onboard waste uh, bin into the waste bag up here. And here is where two things will happen back here, which is there is a little brush here that will move from side to side to scrub the mopping pad. Over here, we do have a little filter tray that you will need to take off and wash every so often. And this right here just simply says when you put it in, make sure you hear a click and make sure it's in securely. Uh, there are two extra roller wheels here also. And here are your charging contacts that we saw on the front of the S7 Max V. In the very back back here, I don't know how well you can see it, but in the very back back here, this is where the uh, dock will fill up the onboard water tank for the S7 Max V. And here on the back of the dock, we see plenty of cord storage, charging plug plugs in here, and you can wrap excess cord around here, which is a nice touch. Overall, the dock is of a nice quality and I'm impressed so far. Uh, let's go ahead and put the S7 Max V on it. Okay, now the S7 Max V appears it can go on the dock in two different ways. I have seen it in photos from Robo Rock in two different ways, and this is starting to make a little bit more sense to me now. Uh, if we remember on the front of the S7 Max V, we saw these two front charging contacts here. These charging contacts line up right here with these charging contacts. And so we know that when it goes on this way, forward, it can charge like that. And my guess is so that that can empty the dust bin of the S7 Max V here. And when it is needing to scrub the mopping pad on the very back, and also fill up the water tank. Of course, it's gonna to have to back up on the dock, just like so. And when it backs up on the dock, now it can scrub that back uh, mopping pad and also fill up the onboard water tank. All right, well, there was the overview and unboxing of the new latest from Roborock, the S7 Max V Ultra. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any questions on this unit. And make sure if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button as I will be doing many head-to-head -head comparisons with this along with a full review out very soon. I appreciate you watching this. Take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye.